Okay, where do I begin? <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be in hiding from YouTube. <laughs> I'm supposed to be taking a break from YouTube. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a person who's been doing YouTube videos more on a secular tip. Um, for a minute now, I've been in YouTube making videos since around 2008. And um, there was a point in YouTube when I was, I guess you could say, um, doing pretty well considering the the that time or era <laughs> um, those earlier days of YouTube when we didn't really have a lot of really popular YouTubers doing um, or black YouTubers doing more uh, I guess you could say what would be considered black centric <laughs> YouTube videos you know this was before you had people like Boyce Watkins and Tariq Nasheed and um, a lot of these um, black YouTubers with um, a lot of really uh, big numbers and subscribers and views. Um, you didn't really have like circles in black YouTubers. Now you had black YouTubers who were popular like um, Glozell Green and um, maybe like the Hodge Brothers. But they kind of had more of a, I guess you could say, mainstream following or audience um, not just, they weren't necessarily considered black YouTube, or they just happened to be YouTubers who we would refer to as black. Um, but they didn't, um, they didn't make videos that were, I guess you could say, uh, should I say more, uh, specifically for black people. Um, and I was, I guess you could say one of the earlier, um, I guess you could say black YouTubers and I was doing for a minute, I was doing pretty well. Um, uh, 10,000 viewers or, or 10,000 subscribers, like getting around 10,000 subscribers at that time, at that time that was seen as pretty good being that I didn't have any connections to any popular, really popular people in YouTube or you know, I wasn't connected with any network. I was just, I'm just some individual. So that was pretty good for that time, even though that scene is nothing now. But um, now why am I saying all this? I'm just giving you my background. It may be um, some people somewhat familiar with my channel. Um, but I was, the videos that I was doing, I guess you could say they were like on the, I guess you could say Afrocentric or, or just um, it, it whether it was it was more secular related to whether I'd be talking about black music or um, speaking on behalf of black women or um, or in defense of it, it became where I it, I found myself doing videos kind of in defense of black women, um, yeah. Um, but I'm just giving you a little of my background in case you're not familiar with my channel. But I've been here in YouTube for a minute. But then you know we went through a phase in YouTube where a lot of our a lot of us, I guess you could say, oh, geez, in YouTube, um, we started being kind of replaced with more popular people after certain popular, more popular personalities like the Boyce Watkins and the Sonettas and, and they, you know, and Tariq Nasheed's even, they became more of the voice for black people in YouTube. And I'm just giving you my background. Um, yeah, so these people who were more popular, had more connections, they began to replace a lot of us. And eventually, um, voices like my own, you know, we kind of got shut out or, um, and I eventually my, me going against a YouTuber who was much more popular, um, eventually had my channel terminated. Um, and I saw what was kind of going on in YouTube. And so that was kind of very discouraging. And I was one of these people up in here who could have been making money, who could have really taken advantage of YouTube. I even, YouTube had even made me offers, but I was never really about that. So when they came to me with offers, I would usually just ignore it. Um, and I'm not saying to others to not have your channel at least monetized, to not benefit, um, in every way, you know, like, 
you know, from YouTube, as long as you're not doing anything wrong or sinful or harming anyone, it just, I, I don't know, I, I guess you could say that I was foolish, not really fully taking advantage of YouTube, but I don't know, I just saw how people changed, and, and I'm not telling others to be as um, <laughs> unwise as I am, but why am I saying all this? I'm just giving you a little background information, but I was initially doing videos, I guess you could say more on a secular tip, I... And I've been in I've been in YouTube since like 2008, late 2008, and I've been in social media since like the early 2000s, like 2001, 2002, using the same name, Lashid for you, um, using that same username, and and I was first in the message forums from like around 2001, 2002. So you know, I've been in the I guess you could say black circles of social media, you know, black sectors of social media for a while now. Um, and I would talk about everything, speak against racism, speak on any and every subject I could speak on. I love talking about music. There's a lot of things I was passionate about. But I always was kind of afraid to speak sharing my spiritual beliefs. And I've talked about this before in videos that you might have heard. Um, I don't know. I, I just... Um, being that I was heavily influenced uh, by the teachings that I had, you know learned from Jehovah's Witnesses being that I had lived with an auntie and uncle um, for a while in my childhood who were Jehovah's Witnesses. My uncle, they're both gone now, but my late uncle being a Jehovah's Witness elder. Although, however, my mother, my own mother, she did not really go to any, you know, religious meetings. She didn't go to church really at all. She believed in the Bible and y'all the Bible, but she didn't go to church. She was, um, yeah, she was, uh, my mother was like black militant. She used to be associated or connected with the Panther Party um, before having all of us children. <laughs> um, yeah, like I believe going back to the 60s, early on in the 70s. Um, yeah, and I'm almost, I'm going to be turning 50. Well, I'm, 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 you could pretty much say I'm, I'm 50 years old now. Yeah, and so it was like I got the education from my mother. I learned, um, my mother was one who taught me to read before I was in school and everything, and things as black militant parents did, and she taught me a lot on black history, black culture, what what's considered black his black culture, or Afro-American culture. I, 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 um, my mother was, I guess you could say, militant, pro-black, but however... My auntie and uncle, who I had to stay with for a while while my mom, being a widow, was struggling, they were Jehovah's Witnesses. So they instilled more in the Bible in, in me. And, you know, I learned holidays and certain things were wrong. So it was like I kind of had, you know, this like dual education. But it, it would also lead me a little split um, because I noticed that although I could talk on all this pro-black stuff, things I originally learned from my mother, I also think about... I always had a, even before living with my auntie and uncle, I, my mother did still believe in Yah or God, or the, who would refer, they would refer to as God in the Bible, Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, so I was, I don't know, but being, oh gosh, forgive me. <laughs> I'm kind of not, I'm doing this, this is very much on impulse, me responding right now and sharing my testimony. Um, it was like I'd learned this from my mother on society, Reaganomics, what's going on. I learned all this from my mother, who was like this black militant, but then my auntie and uncle, who were not on that tip, and they would warn me. They would always be warning me about black pride, black pride, and what the Bible says on pride and everything. But they would teach me a little more on the Bible, right? Them being Jehovah's Witnesses. So, but, so it left me kind of split, because as I got older, when I was a teenager, like in the 80s, I was like, you know, and, and considering all that my family, my family, my immediate family with my mother and all, me and my mother was a widow and had like all of his kids, like, you know, she had a total seven, well, one died of crib death. So I'd say six kids. Um, And I think of all the struggling that my family was hit with eventually my siblings getting into crack cocaine and, and the poverty that I had with my mother and stuff, which is why she had me living with an auntie and uncle for a while in my childhood. 
Um, and I just thought of all the things that my family went through, losing loved ones and, and things that I was going through, becoming a teenage runaway and everything. I just knew, like, okay, I understand my auntie and uncle tried to tell me about pride and all that stuff. And, you know, like, they, they talked to me, being that they were more influenced by the Jehovah's Witness teachings or the and Christian teachings, because Jehovah's Witnesses do see themselves as Christian. Um, you know, I, they taught me on one hand that race and all of that doesn't matter. But then, you know, with my mother, even though she didn't really know much on the Bible, but, um, she, you know, taught, you know, things on race and all that. So it left me kind of split because I'm looking at things in my life and I'm like, well, there is something, there's just something specific with our people. You can't tell me that there's something and not even just with my family, not just with my immediate family and all that we, my family endured and all that, you know, um, and, I, and I've endured, you know, me being born in the projects of Chicago and everything. But there's just something specific that with my people. And, um, yeah. Oh, gosh. I, I, let me get into it. Um, but then one of my brothers who Agnot have found out with some people in Chicago that he was of Yasharel, that the so-called African-Americans were descendants of Yasharel. Now, he wasn't with any Hebrew-Israelite camp um, that we know of that's popular, like, in social media that we know of, like the IUIC. He, he doesn't want to get confused with those people. But and he didn't use, they didn't use the term Hebrew-Israelite, although they did still, like, say the name Jesus. And, yeah, and this was back in the 80s. Um, the, you know, they didn't, didn't dress all garbed up. But I remember staying with this brother as a teenager in the 80s late 80s and that's when I first learned that we were descendants of Yasharel that oh you know I can't say that I was totally convinced but then when I told my auntie and uncle or my auntie who was Jehovah's Witness um when I told her about what I had learned she would she showed me the scripture in the bible what it says on pride you know she would be warning me about that black pride because <laughs> she saw this as just okay another case of just um exercising pride and basically she was trying to show me that oh race doesn't matter and um she i believe she showed me i recall her showing me scriptures on yasharel being more about the spirit more about the the the, the spirit um it, it it doesn't matter like she was showing me scriptures i can't recall the scriptures forgive me for not being able to recall them but like it's more about the spirit today like today it doesn't matter who Yasharel is. So the thing is that I put aside what I had learned um, through my brother. Um, yeah, and I remember my brother showing me these books, the Apocrypha. And I didn't even know about these books that were left out, you know. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, um, so I put aside what I learned from my brother. So when I became an adult, like as a young adult, and by then I had my child, um, I decided I tried to go to the Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall. I tried to have studies with them but for some reason I just was not at the point of totally making that dedication now I did get baptized with this church when I was like 18 but they kind of it was this white with mostly white people in the congregation they were really nice but I you know they kind of talked me into getting baptized you know as soon as I became like a member of this church and I wasn't ready um and I had even got saved at 16 with this one church. But yeah, I decided to start going to the Kingdom Hall for Jehovah's Witnesses as a young adult. You know, I thought that was the right thing to do. But it was just, for some reason, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, like as if there was something more I needed to know or I wasn't. I just never was ready. I still don't feel like I'm ready. Um, But then, um, yeah, so eventually kind of fell off going to the Kingdom Hall, going back to college. I know I'm telling you a lot. I'm just, I'm just talking. I said, let me just talk and record to give you something. <laughs> Maybe you can edit this up, chop this up. Um, yeah, but eventually I got in going back to college. Um, and I got caught up in social media and I got more focused on school and wasn't going to the Kingdom Hall as much. And I was also hit with tragedies in the 2000s, the early 2000s. It kind of started off with the death of my mother in 2003. And then in 2004, the death of my brother and I had uncles and cousins and people all in between and my grandmother and my, my last grandparent and, and, and then my, the death of my sister in 2007 really, really 
uh, you know, my sister died of a, 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 supposedly a heroin overdose. My brother died under police custody. Um, my mother had strokes. She was attacked in her home. It was just so much bad stuff happening with me and my family. And, um, you know, that really just like nearly broke me down. And it was like, I had to go back to college. I had to get, I had to stay busy, I had to work. Um, to just, just to keep my mind off. And I came, this, that's when I started really coming into social media to talk and just to keep me from thinking about all the tragedies and different things that I was enduring and going through. Um, me being a, a survivor of, of REPE, it was just a whole lot of things that I had went through. Um, um, my child being hurt. Uh, it, it was a lot of things that I had went through. And social media was a way of me just getting I'm just talking so that I I don't have to think being in you know if, if I was uh in social media reading or talking or uh, about or listening to gossip or whatever on celebrities or whatever it would just keep me from thinking and I went back to college and I was working and me doing homework I just was doing everything it seemed I guess to keep from thinking about what I was going through to, to you know you know to you know to keep from unaliving myself or something you know or doing something drastic, you know, me staying away from drugs and things like that, um, the best I could. <laughs> Although I would, you know, drink with some friends, but eventually I had to let all of that go. Um, yeah, so, but uh, as I was doing, when I was in YouTube and working on an Ancient Egypt series, um, you know, and proving that the Egyptians were black. You know, I'm still on the Afrocentric tip. But I was, again, I was reluctant to talk about my beliefs in the Bible. I don't know, because it just seemed like that wasn't the pro-black thing to do. I don't know. I, I just didn't really like the responses that I would get from other people if I shared my spiritual beliefs. Although I've always believed in the Most High Yah, the Bible. Um, even though for years I referred to him as Jehovah, um, used the Jehovah Jesus Christ, um, for, you know, the son, the Messiah and Jehovah Yah for the most high creator, the Jehovah God. Those were the terms that I used for years, Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, as I had been taught. Um, but as I, yeah, and I, I had took, I was in college and, and taking a course that was related, a, a course in anthropology that I had to take going back to college in the 2000s. I had to take this course. And at the same time, it was a course in philosophy. And these courses, and this happened to be after my sister's death, um, tragic death in 2007, her being found decomposed in a car. And that was like really, really hard for me. Um, and me learning with this, at the same time, this anthropology classes, which is basically a class teaching evolution. And also this class in philosophy that was also trying to, you know, it was like trying to question my belief in, in, in God. I'll just use the term God for the sake of us all understanding, even though I know I shouldn't use that term. Um, yeah. And for the first time in my life, I began to question quote unquote God's existence. Like after the death of my sister, and being that she was out of my life, much of my life, and I always wanted a sister, I had all these brothers, and she was like not really around me that much. She was always in the streets or something. So when I, she dies, just as me and my daughter making this connection with her. You know, I always wanted a girl, because I was referred to as a tomboy. I always wanted a female, for, you know, it's just I didn't, you know, my sister wasn't there for, you know, me. And now I'm connecting with her. And she leaves me like this. I'm connecting with her, and she's connecting with my daughter. And I helped raise her children. My mother had custody of them, and I'm connecting with her. And with the death of my sister, I already endured the death of my mother and brother, amongst other relatives. But then with the death of my sister, that just really, that, you know, around late 2007, and I'm in college, and yeah, so it was 2008, did my first YouTube video, but... The, the death of my sister, that really started me to question things. And then me having to take this class, you know, teaching me, anthro supposedly anthropology, teaching me te in, in evolution, um, you know, Darwinism, Darwin theories. And that's when I really just start, you know, questioning and wait, this is, 
you know, it, it was like almost like Satan trying to um, shake my faith. And that's when, you know, I decided to do one of my first videos, let's say around 2010, I think, I did take it on the theories of evolution. Because my my faith, my belief in y'all, I just couldn't be shaken though. It just couldn't, I just couldn't find myself like cursing the most high. Even though, you know, of course, I had questions like, why does, why so much happen to me and my family? Why are always bad things happening? You know? And I, cause I used, even amongst black people, I used to just feel like my specific family was even more cursed. <laughs> it was always broke, we were always poor. Always having to be in shelters, things like that, you know, growing up. Me having to live with other relatives who happen to have a little more money than my family. My mama was seen as, you know, like all us, you know, we kind of seen like bastard kids. I mean, that, that's how we were, yeah, perceived by, yeah, my mom became a, a, a widow, you know, so. Yeah, so not all of us, and I don't have the same father as my other siblings. Um yeah, and so we were kind of seen as outcasts even amongst my own family, my particularly immediate family. So it was like when these tragedies hit my family, my sister dying of those, almost like, oh, these were things that were expected to happen to my family. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, oh, goodness. I, I, okay, let me, let me try to speed it up. See, I get to talk, and that's why I had to leave YouTube for a minute. <laughs> so I'll talk on and on forever. Um, forgive me for chuckling, but it's just my way of um, dealing with things. Um, yeah, so even though, yeah, and, and I start, you know, I had always hung, like, with, you know, I always liked being in social media amongst other people who would be considered pro-black, taking on white racism, etc. But then I started noticing, especially more and more on YouTube, that it the pro-black pro -black had became... Not so much about helping other black people, but it became, I noticed how the new pro-black, what is considered pro-black, became wagging the finger at other black people. Whether it's wagging the finger at black men, where they wrong, or, or black women, where they you wrong, or, or black. And then I noticed that more and more people, particularly like in YouTube, who claim to be pro-black, they started targeting the Bible more. It started becoming a thing to target the Bible. Now, I know that, you know, there have been those who are considered comedic and all of that, and um, a 5% nation Islam or whatever, or nation Islam, and, and I've had arguments and stuff with, in debates with people who are the nation of Islam or comedic and this and that, but they, they still didn't really, they used to, it, it used to seem like they didn't feel the need to attack people who went to church or believed in the Bible or who they considered Christian or yeah, but I noticed how that became more and more popular, especially in YouTube as we got more and more popular personalities in YouTube. And it became, I noticed, the, the, the thing to bash the Bible. And I'm not with that, you know. I may be considered or perceived as pro-black, but I'm not with that. But that became the new pro-black, not just... You know, whether it's wagging the finger at black people, what we should be doing, and it almost seemed as if... It didn't seem like a lot... Black love, you know, I'm not seeing black love. I thought pro-black is for black, and it also involves love for your, your brother and sister. And, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to be anti-white but um, or anti-anything else, but, you know, I thought pro-black, you know, it's, pro, it's also about pro-love for black people. But I wasn't seeing much of the love. It just seemed like it, it became more and more about criticism, almost like, and, and I'm seeing these black people now, more and more, they're sounding like white racists and being so critical. I, I'm like, I don't see the difference between you and a Candace Owens or, you know, and any other critic, uh, black or, or Larry Elders or, What's the difference? But they, these are people who are supposedly pro-black, and I'm seeing this more and more on social media. And then another thing I noticed more and more, it became the thing to criticize and bash the Bible and claim it's the white man's book and and yet slave and black people. I'm like, no, no, no. Obviously, y'all don't have an understanding of the scriptures or the. Yeah, but as anyways, when I was doing my ancient Egypt series and proving that the ancient Egyptians were indeed would be considered part of the black race. I noticed that information was coming to me. I was doing a lot of re. It, it took me a while to, to get that series out. And that series, before my channel, my original channel was terminated, it had got a whole lot of views. And I felt good about that people saw it and shared it. And I understand I didn't make any money in YouTube. Um, Yeah. 
but I just felt good that people appreciated my effort and work and, you know, but as I was doing that series, which took a while and took a lot of research and downloading and PDFs and, and, and printing out, and, <laughs> but there was information coming to me that I wasn't even necessarily seeking information that was proving to me that the, the so-called black people or the, of the Americas who were enslaved in the Americas were indeed, in fact, you know, descendants of Yasharel or the, the, or, or the ancestors, the, the, um, the Israelites spoken of in the Bible, they were indeed black. And this information was coming to me, although I was not even necessarily seeking it. And I'm not saying that when I was studying with my brother as a teenager, I didn't totally believe what he was showing me on Yasharel being, quote unquote, what we would consider black, anthropologically speaking, or Africoid or even quote unquote Negroid, anthropologically speaking. But um, yeah, uh, I, I I just put that aside because I, 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 I was told, you know, by my Jehovah's Witness auntie and uncle, like, you know, like that sh shouldn't matter. So I kind of put it aside. So I'm not saying I, I totally didn't believe him, but I was like, but then it started coming to me. Like, obviously this, this information is coming to me for a reason. And, um, and for some reason, I, I felt that I couldn't totally fit in with Jehovah's Witness. I didn't feel like I just never was at that point of totally getting baptized with them and making that dedication. And I just didn't. At first, I was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I, you know? Obviously, I believe that there was more that was intended for me to know about myself and who I am and, and what I am and what I'm supposed to be doing or, or uh, you know, what's going on with my people, with my life. Because definitely, yeah, and me learning about the curses more and more like okay and I realized no this isn't just my family and and yeah and and see that's the thing um you know I, I think I had became a little too self-absorbed in my own issues not realizing that there are a lot of our people you know going through what you know I thought was just with my family um yeah, so in me learning more and more, and I was like, wow, you know, me getting this information that was hitting me, just hitting me, that I wasn't even necessarily seeking. And I was like, wow, what my brother was showing me was right all along. And then I did realize, yeah, a lot of this does involve what we want to call race, uh, but it's not so much a racial, this is all very much spiritual, I begin to realize. And even questioning how the most high consider us referring to ourselves as black yeah so I've been kind of I don't know I, I even looked at with my channel being shut down like maybe it was the will or terminated or the most high because before I had my channels shut down I started doing more videos even though people were not used to me doing bible related like videos you know I would do videos talking about black music and, and, and you know the gender stuff and and all this and all kind of secular stuff in relation mostly to black people and black issues or whatever. But I started doing videos, you know, and talking on debunking evolution. And I went from, you know, and and, um, and I had let the people know. I let my listeners know that I'm going to be perhaps doing more Bible-related videos. I know I'm going to lose a lot of y'all, but I may, you know. But what's interesting is that the videos I did related to the Bible, I even spoke to on the phone with Professor Griff of Public Enemy because I told him I'm thinking about going in this direction and I, I don't know, you know, because I know that that's not the pro-black thing and, and I may lose people who are listening to my video. Even he said, even though he's not really a Bible believer like that, but he even told me to don't worry about what people think. And, and it's interesting me looking at your video, Serve the Kingdom Not Meant, or listening to your video, Serve the Kingdom Not Meant. Um, but I, I, I was like, just knowing that I'm going to lose people, but people were actually anticipating. There were people, you know, telling me people, I didn't even know really believe in the Bible. They were like, oh, we've been waiting on the Bible related. So we've been waiting. We, and this was like a couple of years ago now. And so I was getting out some videos. I said, first, I'm going to take on trying to debunk evolution. And then I'm going to go from there. But then I found myself getting caught up with certain trolls. People were trolling me because I did videos against this one popular YouTuber. And so he had, who was known for attacking black women. So he had trolls he set up to come after me. And they kept distracting me as I was trying. And I found myself responding to them. You know, it was like, this was all set up from the devil. <laughs> um... 
And I found myself very easily distracted. Um, but I was, what was surprising that the videos I was doing, I was Bible, like, I guess you could say related, they were getting more views than I had thought, you know? Um, and I didn't really expect that. Uh, and there were people, I guess, who did want to hear this. Even if it wasn't as many as, but I was just surprised that there were people, um, yeah, this one intellectual, this one black intellectual guy, he was, yeah, I was really, you know, you know, all praises to the most high, yeah, no glory to myself, but I was really, I ain't gonna lie, I was felt a little flattered, or I don't know how to put it, that he, because he was a person that is like really intellectual, who, but he, when he said, he had posted to me saying that, you know, his, that the video really, like, I guess like kind of enlightened him on some things. Um, and I'm like, wow, he, this intellectual, <laughs> he, he's known as this intellectual in YouTube. Who he, he's considering what, you know, my, this video that I put together, you know, not to take glory to myself, but I'm just saying that if, you know, if this message is able to reach him and I'm thinking his, his, his level of intellect is way above mine that he would not even consider. Cause I had, I had to deal with people being in chat rooms and there were pro people who are considered pro black. Um, and I would, or I thought they were considered pro-black. And I, like, I remember we were talking on the shooting of Philando Castile and this guy just cut me off said, oh, well, you believe in the Bible. So what you got to say don't matter anyway. And I had to deal with comments like that. Or people would poke at me and I'm in chat rooms on panels and, um, they would be saying things, you know, like to trigger me, taking jabs at the Bible. Even a person even gave a shout out to the devil just to, to they thought it was funny you know, and, I, and and people who I was associated with in YouTube making mockery of me or like, um, oh, I'm forcing my Bible beliefs on every, and, you know, and, and I just, and it was getting really, really frustrated. And I remember even making a comment in someone's video um, in the chat room because they were once again taking jabs at the Bible. And I was saying, well, look, I know that the scriptures and y'all's word is what helped get certain siblings of mine off of crack cocaine. And so then somebody left the comment, oh, they just traded in the crack pipe for the Bible. And, you know, and I'm not going to lie, that like really um, was really, I felt that was really insensitive, you know, especially when I think of the death of my sister. Um, you know, but I had to deal, endure stuff like that. Um, yeah, because it's, uh, but anyways, anyways, um, so this just kind of left me like, I don't know if I'm down with this pro-black crowd. <laughs> and I don't want to sound like, um, excuse me for putting this way, getting on the coon train, but I, I, I don't know if I'm, you know, I'm, I will always, I will never like turn against my people like that, or, you know, um, and, and join and become like a Candace Owens or somebody. I would never be like that. But, um, yeah, and I'm I'm seeing like black women like for instance I did videos in defense of black women against people like you know that were in popular YouTubers who were known for bashing black women. But then I saw some of these same black women who you know we were kind of on the same tip. But I see them now becoming what what's referred to as divestors and going in the route of bashing black men. I'm not about that either. You know what I'm saying? I love my people, male and men and women. I love, you know what I'm saying? And I just want us to come together and know the truth and just, you know. Um, so I just like, I don't know. I don't know where I belong. Where do I fit? But then at the same time, I don't feel like I'm with those who do more Bible related and center or more Yah inspired videos and, and content, I don't feel like I'm at that tip because I'm still listening to Snoop Dogg. I'm still caught up in the world of hip hop because I'm very passionate about music and hip hop. And, and then that's another thing too. There are those who just subscribe to my channel because they like hearing my discussions on hip hop and, and rap. I mean, I used to rap and stuff myself and that was one of the things hip hop was an escapism in my life when I was a young, a kid and a teenager and stuff. And so I'm still very much caught in discussions on hip hop. And, you know, I'm listening to, to, to the rap artists, hip hop artists, funk artists, R and B artists and stuff that I house music artists that I know I shouldn't be listening to and, and having these discussions on such secular music. And so I just didn't feel, you know, in a way I don't feel like, 
you know, I should be doing Bible related videos. And I've talked about this before and I'm, I'm sure you've heard me speak on this. So I'm like, I, I can't call myself doing videos that are Bible related and then going back to talking about, um, <laughs> Snoop, you know, his new album, his Bush album. And, you know, uh, yeah. So I just, you know, like, but, but at the same time, you know, when you feel as if you're being motivated, like this is what you're supposed to be doing. And when I, yeah, and the thing is, the thing is, forgive me, I know I'm taking a while. Um, what am I trying to say? The thing is, is that, um, this is what's interesting. I remember I, I said that I had started doing, when was this? Was it around 2015, 16? I started doing, easing, like easing in there, some Bible related videos, right? While I got this audience of a good amount of subscribers you know, like nearly 15,000. Um, I started easing in there, some Bible related videos and I actually, some people were listening. They was watching, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, and they were waiting, but I found myself getting back caught up like with the trolls and with this particular addressing this particular YouTuber who was part of the gender warring and all of this stuff. And so eventually, and me getting so caught up, and it's almost like I was getting a warning because I did make videos against that YouTuber, but it was almost as if the Most High was telling me, okay, you've addressed this person enough. Time to move on. But I didn't really listen. <laughs> and me allowing, okay, oh, this person going to say this about me or do this? No, I'm, I'm taking them on. I'm going to, you know, this person, you know. <laughs> And next thing you know, my channel was like terminated and, and I tried to come and I had like channel at the time of terminated. And then it got to a point where I realized that them coming YouTube coming after me it wasn't just about this YouTuber. But, you know, I, I did take it as a message from the most hot, like because, you know, like perhaps he wanted me to keep going in a certain direction. And it's like each time I come back into YouTube and get caught up on secular topics too much and um I don't know it's like things ain't really oh I'm finding myself getting more frustrated frustrated with YouTube frustrated but almost as if this is what you're supposed to be talking about right now this is so getting around to your videos um I had discovered your videos the secret place truth be told Bobby Holloway Robert Holloway's channel I had um discovered your channel well I had started listening in uh uh uh, uh yeah, last last year. Yeah. Well, I had discovered your channel. I think it was either through the Minister of Wellness or the Watchman Reports. They had mentioned you. And I checked out your channel. I described, I subscribed to your channel. And um, I like that you were just... It reminded me of when I first started doing videos. Just I would be like in my bathroom because I felt the lighting was best and just talking to people. Maybe do like a 10-minute video talking to people. But I like that you were sitting in your car and... Um, yeah, and just giving your testimony as well as sharing scriptures and giving some ministry, but also your own personal testimony. And me, and also that's another thing that I had been dealing with. Um, I've been needing um, surgery on my knee. Um, I've been having some health issues. Not really nothing all that serious, but it can become very serious. And being, you know, I got to a point where I nearly couldn't walk anymore. And because of this, you know, that caused me to gain a lot of weight. And so I've been from that weight gain and stuff. And, um, and eating more <laughs> and yeah so um this is causal of depression of course um but after you know hearing all that you share that you've been on I was like wow you know you had you know different surgeries and stuff and um so and, and I, I just decided as I was uh you know exercising trying to get it together trying to get more on a healthier tip after yeah I got to like a, a pre-diabetic scare and I it just wasn't feeling right. I wasn't feeling myself and I had put on all this weight, especially after having a fall too. And yeah, needing knee replacement surgery. I've been way overdue it, oh, for it. Um, but I've been scared to, yeah, but I was just having different issues and also going through menopause and just uh, different um, issues that I wasn't used to. And that was causing depression and um, with, you know, everybody around me working and me no longer being able to work outside the home and stuff. So I'm like, I got to get together. So 
um, I said, you know what, um, you know, I need just something. I felt that in YouTube, I just, or just in me learning and doing my videos, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm more about knowledge and learning and exposing this information, exposing that. But I need to hear a testimony. I need ministry, more ministry. Like I like watching the Watchmen reports every, um, at least once a week, you know, as well as Redirecting's channel. And um, because I need a little more ministry, you know, and I like that you give more personal testimony. You know, it's one thing to have all this knowledge of who we are as Yasharel, but I need more ministry, more testimony. Because I feel like I have this knowledge. And that was one thing, being with Jehovah's Witnesses, you may obtain knowledge. Like there were a lot of things I learned about even before people were talking more about in YouTube. Like one thing I don't regret, see, I don't regret studying with Jehovah's Witnesses because I did learn details about the origin of Christmas and this, this, and that. But um, there was so much more I need to learn that obviously Jehovah's Witnesses were not teaching me. But I did definitely learn about the pagan origins of these holidays and all that stuff. Um, but with Jehovah's Witnesses, it's like you'll obtain that knowledge, but a lot of times that spirit, you know, um, yeah. And but in studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, this is something I may do a, a video in the future talking about my experience with Jehovah's Witnesses and how you could be left feeling guilty a lot about a lot of things. Like people talk about the supposed downfall of Michael Jackson and this and that and and I mean and considering what Cat Williams shared recently and um I, I wouldn't mind giving even I don't didn't see I never saw Jehovah's Witnesses necessarily as a cult, although I have another relative who did see him as a cult because she was disassociated with him. But um, I will say this. You will be feeling guilty. I, I do think that this is common with people who have studied with Jehovah's Witnesses. You will find yourself feeling, if you're no longer studying with them, you'll feel guilty about a lot of things. And that's the thing. I have been, I think what's been holding me back from really making certain dedications is because I never feel ready. You just don't feel like you're good enough. You just don't. And that may be my own obsessive compulsive disorder. Not saying I was diagnosed with that, but <laughs> that's what I see it as. But I think what's been holding me back from doing certain videos, talking, even though I can talk about and do videos on any and everything else and put time into it, yeah, because I've kind of got like what would be called like a writer's or artist block when it comes to doing the videos in relation to the most high. Even though I I get on it with any other subject and do a 12-part series. But I think that I just feel, even I've gathered and garnered all this information and I, that need to be shared. And I know I can't like keep that to myself. And it's going to get out there. If, if most high willing, it's going to get out there whether the most high uses me or whoever he can there's always you know someone else but if it's meant intended for me to do then i i know i need to get on it um but the thing is i just don't feel like i'm ready or i'm prepared or i'm the person i, I don't want to be a hypocrite i don't want to there's always this shame <laughs> um that i have like i'm not you know worthy i'm not uh qualified to 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 do this or speak on these things or um, and perhaps that has to do with, you know, me, what I've learned from Jehovah's Witnesses or how I, I have been taught by them. I don't know, but, um, it's, it's, see, I'm now contacting you cause you, I, I, let me read the post that I left with you just recently. Okay. I had to just stop my exercises to come in here and post to you. And because you, your recent video that I've listened to, Serve the Kingdom, Not Men. This, um, so I left the post and it reads, I know that I don't usually post in the comment section of your vids. I usually watch, listen to your videos from my television away from a keypad, like while exercising. But I couldn't help but go to my desktop to leave a comment after hearing you, um, Bobby Holloway, say that you would be exiting YouTube for a while. Yeah. And I say, now, if you believe that this is what the Most High Yah is telling you to do, I don't want to be, I don't want to interfere. But I must say that I would really like for you to continue doing these uploads, sharing your testimony and ministry, even if others may not share their testimony with, with you. Your videos have really benefited me and others, I'm sure. By the way, um, now last year, even though I fell off, last year I had lost 
like 30 pounds, making sure to wake up, listen to your videos, like usually like while exercising or after exercise or before I exercise, <laughs> um, start the day. See, I usually try to start my days at least six days a week, listening to your videos, one of your videos and, um, and, uh, uh, the book of Psalms, I mean, a chapter in Psalms. And then I try to get with my husband and, and, um, listen to like a scripture, a, a chapter uh, at night and make sure that we pray. And that's what I've been trying to do. And, you know, like watch the Watchmen over the weekend and stuff, Watchmen Reports channel and their ministry. Um, okay. But I'm okay. Let me continue with what I tell. Okay. I say, your videos have really benefited me and others, I'm sure. And they have been, your videos, that is, have been a part of my schedule starting off my day. I have been listening to your videos, inspired to share my testimony with you. Um, but I just did not feel ready. Because I understand, I've been hearing your videos when you've been asking people to share their testimony with you. And, and it almost like it's calling to me. <laughs> but the thing is... Um, yeah, I said, I feel as if Yah is speaking to me, you know, through your videos, calling me to testify, testify through your videos, and perhaps I will email you a video soon. Hopefully I get this um, out to you now, which I'm recording now. And I said, thank you and praise the Most High Yahuwah for your ministry and testimony. And I'm telling you this because each day I was listening to your videos and it's like they're talking like, like the Most High telling me, uh, get on it. And <laughs> <laughs> share your testimony even though I said I was exiting I'm trying to exit YouTube for a minute because I don't know I don't, especially after this whole Cat Williams thing and it, it just seemed you know with the Shannon Sharp interview it just I, I just noticed that it, it seemed like our people particularly Asherel just want to be caught up in gossip and that's all we want to talk about and and I'm just at a point where I don't know and I just said, let me disappear. And I see what's causing me to fall off. And I, I feel like I'm allowing myself to be too distracted. So I totally, I'm, I've come to this cha this one channel of mine where I'm only, I'm, I'm primarily subscribed to channels like yours and channels that may be related to health and crafts and art and, th you know, things like that where there's no, not much secular um, gossip where I don't expect to see some videos on a lot of secular gossip on celebrities and all that kind of stuff and things that might get me caught up and distracted. Um, and so I just been, you know, like listening mostly to videos like yours and, um, and so I really need your channel. <laughs> um, and, and I'll just say to you, brother, even if people are not responding, do not be discouraged because, um, there are people like myself and those who may be referred to as lurkers who I'm sure really um, appreciate and really, you know, look forward to your videos each day. And um, I, I must say that I really do feel that your your channel has been a blessing. And, I, um, and, uh, uh, and I've been in YouTube for a while. And I've come across a lot of YouTubers, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of subscribers, also making videos in relation to the Bible, giving ministry and testimony even. But it's just something about um, your uh, videos in particular. I don't know. Um, there's somebody, it's like there's somebody for everybody. You know, there's somebody, like I, I didn't know there would be people, people who even who may not even had been totally believed in the Bible who would be, I guess you could say, attracted to or, or, or willing to listen to and watch the videos that I did in relation to the Bible, debunking evolution, this and that. And these weren't even just, quote, unquote, black people either, come to find out. And they were, like, actually anticipating for me to do the Bible videos, and I thought I would lose these people. But I didn't follow through with, and it's been years now, I didn't follow through what I said I would do. I didn't continue. And I, I'm trying to get back in that mode, but it's like, what's 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 the block? What's the writer's block? And and I think I just feel that I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I'm, or maybe I feel it has to be so polished and perfect and and well put together and edited. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I'm just sharing this with you. Yeah, yeah. T I, I I um, what is the? I, I only reason I didn't sooner do the video giving testimony. I didn't feel that. 
I feel like I got to be at this certain point before and saying that, oh, I feel that I'm saved or <laughs> before I can do a video or I feel that I, I finally let go of this music and I finally, and I can't say that I'm totally at that point yet, but I, I do feel compelled right now to share my testimony, to share at least this testimony with you. I do your video and understand that I'm back on it. I'm back losing weight. I'm back on a healthy tip and I've been, and I noticed when, I listen to your videos. All praise to the Most High Yah. <laughs> um, I feel, and, and when I stay focused and, and try to not be distracted by all this other stuff, I do feel more blessed. I do feel, um, so I, I definitely believe that you are doing Yah's will, even if you don't get as many people responding. And this is something I had to realize myself. No. Yeah, and, and, and give me. Let me tell you, it's frustrating when you you did know that you had this many subscribers, and all of a sudden people aren't really listening to you anymore. They'd rather listen to this person who's a little more popular, or they may be a little funnier, or they may be a little flashier, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, or they they are more likely to cuss somebody out. And being that I'm not one to really be cussing people out, even though I have slipped up in here getting petty. Um. Yeah, um, it could get fun, but you know what? I think about those few people who hung in there with me. Like now, if I do a live stream, I'm luck. Well, should I use the word lucky or fortunate enough? If I, maybe I get twenty people, even though I'm one of the original people up in here getting the live streams popping, I may just now get twenty people <laughs> and yeah, you know, listen to my live stream. But that's okay, man. And I think I, I consider those ones who. Like there's a sister Kimberly Johnson that you know have been with me at Penisoid for a long time, listening to my you know, content, and it's not to, it's not about me though, it's about the Most High Yah, and you said it yourself. Like even if there's that one person, that one person, maybe you're just meant to reach Yah using us to reach even that one person, you know. Um. So I just, I'm just saying this to keep you inspired. I don't want you to, I, you know, I don't know if you're feeling any sort of discouragement, but don't be discouraged um, and know that what you're doing, I, I'm sorry that I've, I've, I've left such a lengthy message. Um, oh my gosh, is this an hour long? Oh, shame on me. But you can chop it up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to be... Yeah, just know that, brother. I do feel that you are you 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 are a blessing, um. And, and, and oh man, it's something when you had went through what you were going through with your surgery last year. Um, it was around the same time I was falling off. Uh, <laughs> cause I was doing good when I started like listening to your videos and, and exercising, and praying, and most you know just just staying more focused. And within two months, I had like lost like 30 pounds and, uh, and I learned more in sewing and I was just being more productive within two months. And, and it was around the time that you, you had the surgery. And I ain't gonna lie, I was worried. I was worried that I fell off and I wasn't listening to your videos regularly or reading the Bible as I should, you know, reg you know, and got back up in this arguing with people in YouTube and just the, the riffraff and stupidity and just worrying about celebrities and all that kind of stuff. Caught back up and listening to music and watching things that I shouldn't be watching and listening to. It was around that time. Well, it was also a thing of me. Um, I had a, a relative to come through and, and it was just this, this relative. And it was nearly killed and you know and it kind of shook me up so it was like all kind of happened at the same time and I ended up falling off gaining the weight back and all of that but we back on it and and I just got to know what my weaknesses and triggers are but I'm not going to let this go into an hour so let me stop right here and I, I just wanted to share that with you so you know if, if it is if if y'all is calling you to um to to take a break I understand because that's what I'm doing right now then so be it. But know that um, I am listening and there are others who are listening who are you're reaching, even if that's only two other people. That's okay. That is okay. And that's what I, I've come to an understanding of. That's okay. Um, know that I, I definitely believe that Yahuwah is using you 
and perhaps he is using me as well. Um, and um, your 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 testimony and ministry it, it is necessary, and all may all praises to the be be to the Most High Yah, and um, even I, I would like to see you continue doing videos, but um, whatever is is that you feel Yah is calling you to do, you know, so be it. And I, I won't stand in the way, but I just wanted to let you know that you are, your testimony and ministry, Yah's ministry is very much appreciated. Um, so um, take care of you and your family, and may you continue to be blessed. Much peace, much love.